Dreams are made to be achieved. Intuition production. On this episode of Think Like a DJ, the mixtape podcast, we catch up with NFL professional football player, philanthropist, and father, former Green Bay Packer Lance Kendricks. As he discusses the power of focus, family, and finance, and his Black Lives Matter protest at Lambeau Field. After talking with Kendricks, whom I attended Rufus King High School, and both Tinez and I attended college with at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, we learned a life lesson from this genius-level black man. Don't cheat the grind. If your life was a party, how many would RSVP? If you only live once, will your one party become a party of one? Join us live in the mix as we first pick our tempo and ultimately rock the party. This episode is sponsored by Head Start MK and Intuition Productions. Ken earned a Master's of Science in Business Administration from Cardinal Stritch, and I'm a published author and a licensed wealth coach. For private business, consulting, book coaching, or simply to share your story, write us today at tladjpodcast at gmail.com. Man, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, I've known you guys forever, man. So it's good to catch up and talk to you guys. Um, I guess I can start with, uh, you know, growing up in Milwaukee on the north side, uh, right off of Congress. Um, I had three older brothers. I have three older brothers. Um, I was raised in a household with mom and dad. And, uh, you know, I, I did have friends who were raised in a household with either just mom or dad. So um, I understand with... Uh, I understand what a lot of my peers had to go through growing up. And um, I guess with me having three older brothers, uh, it was easy to just to fall into sports, just like all of us. And, um, you know, starting out at McDowell, uh, I went to a Montessori school with uh, a bunch of UW kids, a bunch of King kids. Uh, I think that just going to a Montessori school, I I don't know if y'all, Martinez or Ken, if you guys went to a Montessori school. No, we uh, did. I, I didn't. But my son and his mother is a Montessori teacher, and so nice. I speak on the end of you know the, the yeah. aspects of independence and building all sorts of things. And I can exactly. directly see why you're you're pushing that. And so uh, exactly, and I, I feel like going to Montessori school had a lot to do with my independence, my wanting to get into art. I feel like that just being in that type of environment lets you explore your creative side. And uh, <clears throat> so so that that's kind of where the art came into play. And then obviously just being on the playground with the kids and shooting the football around, um, I, I kind of always gravitated towards football uh, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Like growing up in Milwaukee, everybody hoops, which is which is great. Like we all hoop, but for whatever reason, um, I just gravitated towards the football. So um, I, I, I started out in flag football when I was a kid and – um, I think by by the time I was thirteen, um, I was we were doing contact uh, tackle football. Um, I'm trying to think of the park that we used to play football. At. I can't think of the name of it right now. But um, those but are it, humble beginnings for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Nothing humble beginnings, but no. yeah. But then I guess fast forward, I get to King, and you know, I meet guys like you, Ken, and um, you know, guys like Randy who are or smart, not only smart, but they're athletic and they're artistic. So it's like, oh, shit, I, I, there's some people like me around. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's just a – and I think what I really liked about King was it was such a melting pot of just kind of everybody. So you, you kind of got that culture of just everything all in one. You got the the, the uh, academics, and then we, we had a obviously a great basketball team with guys there. And, um, you know, football and track were kind of whatever, but – we we had a we went to a great school with like great people and I, I yeah. think yeah and I think that really helped shape like who I am man like just having those those great teachers and um, like uh, what was her name uh, dude we had so many good <laughs> good yeah. teachers I, I can't even think of um, what our our football coach uh, Ken uh, what was his wife's name Mister. Uh, they hey, both don't, coached don't, there. You probably don't. I can't put you on the spot. Yeah, don't put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. But anyway, a few years removed. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't. I don't want to stretch it too long. But I, I think 
I think just growing up in a household with both parents and I saw that my parents worked really hard. They put me in a, a Montessori school, which helped my creativity as well as my independence and me wanting to be an athlete because everybody out there, like we hit the playground, everybody was either hooping, playing dodgeball or or uh, football. So, and I think fast, no, go ahead. It's, it seems as though you're saying that, you know, just based off that uh, upbringing, that, you know, it, it was things that positioned you in yes. order to have success and for you to uh, sort of share your successful moments with others, with like-minded individuals. You know, I, I gave a little um, sort of introduction into the Head Start MKE, mm -hmm. uh, which is building the, you know, bridging that gap between like-minded individuals and helping them to tap into resources that they might ha might not have within their industry. And so uh, me knowing, you know, Randy, you know, his background, and he was, a, you know, cross country. He was, you guys were runners as far as those athletes. I was a basketball and you were football. Mm -hmm. We all sort of came from a different sort of direction or different passion. You know what I mean? But sort of still like minded. Can you touch on that a bit more as far as those connections and how you feel that sort of allegiance to uh, to support other like minded individuals? Yeah, I think. um like, yeah, like piggyback on what you just said, just having guys like us around who um, are into the same things, but who aren't afraid to like go to class and like study for a test and actually try to get good grades. You know, it was like, it, it almost seemed like the cool thing and the stigma was kind of like, oh, you're an athlete, you know, you, you, you probably don't go to class, you skip class or whatever, but not, nah, we were, all of us, man. I think me. I think all of us had Spanish class together. I remember that. And um, now nah, we we were just. I think we were just all competitive, and we're competitive in the classroom. We were competitive in um, sports. So I think that's what we had in common, and I think that's what yeah. kind of gravit what made us all gravitate towards each other. We we all were competitive everywhere, and uh, sure. yeah. So I think. Speak on that mindset right there. Like, mm -hmm. I want to keep you within that vein right there. Yeah. Uh, it takes a certain type of person, a certain type of athlete. I play basketball. I know it's physical. I know we get bumped. I know we get bruised. I know. Just speak on the competitive nature that it takes to become, to go from, you know, high school athlete to college athlete yeah. and star to the professional level and the sort of focus, the competitiveness, Cause these are all skills that can easily translate in a business realm, yep. you know what I mean? Or entrepreneurial realm or just professional. And so uh, continue just to speak on that. If you yeah. don't mind. No, I think you hit a couple of the words. I think one of the words is focus. And I think um, once you go from high school to college, I think everybody has, you know, you, you get to college, everybody's fast now, like in high school, half the kids on the football field were fast or um, half of the kids, could could uh had a good jumper but like you get to college everybody got a good jumper everybody could run fast everybody so it's like what is, what's gonna set you apart um from the next man because everybody runs a four or five now so i <laughs> i think what really sets you apart is the focus and the consistency um and i feel like <clears throat> those are two like super hard things to do that seem really easy it's like get up every day and do the same thing over again, over and over again and get better at it every single day. It seems easy, but you know, if it was easy, I guess everybody would do it. It's right. so I think that's what separates high school to college. It's just that being able to focus and being consistent. I know when I got to college, um, it was, it was, it was a lot going on. The campus was huge. Uh, I didn't lift weights until I got to college. So I was, I had to like, adjust that um you say you ain't left no way bro, I, I, that's the craziest <laughs> thing ever bro like i don't we ain't I, know that part. I, I, bro it's just genetics bro. like i didn't even really live to high school that was a crazy thing like a, oh, yeah for our li listeners we're laughing. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've known less for some years and we we can count how many times we've seen them grow yeah right right <laughs> we've seen the same we've been the same size for quite some time <laughs> for real so. <laughs> but no, you, you said it, man. Uh, just give the <clears throat> excuse me, give the listeners a bit more about your professional uh, background within the NFL, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so I, I played nine years in the league. Uh, I was drafted in the 
probably arguably the best draft class ever uh, in mm -hmm. 2011. And uh, I was a second rounder to St. Louis. I uh, got there. Um, it was it was rough. It was rough because St. Louis at the time was coming off. I mean, they they, they won the Super Bowl and then they kind of just dropped. And I, I think that's kind of where they had to change ownership and all of that. So the it, it, we were we were struggling um, in the beginning. So uh, I, I, anyways, let me fast forward. I stayed there. I, I stayed in St. Louis for five years. Um, we moved to St. Louis. I mean, we moved to L.A. in my sixth year. And then I, I played my sixth year there. We were, and and um, my contract was done. And then I got picked up by Green Bay for two years. So I was with Green Bay for two. And then I played my last year with the, the L.A. Chargers. So I played nine total. <clears throat> Nice. Great, great. How how was it? Uh, you spoke of the initial you coming into the league as a rookie. You know, what I mean, you're under your rookie contract, right? Uh, you focus, you, right. you level headed. You you got your morning routine. You already know what it's gonna take to like get better every yeah. you know, every day. You lifting, you know, you lifting weights and shit <laughs> now. <laughs> oh man, it. I, I think that was the hardest transition, honestly. Like, I thought transitioning from high school to college was going to be tough, but I think going from college to the league is even tougher because, like, in college, you're playing ball for the school. You know, you're playing for your family, your friends. But when you get to the league, it's more like entertainment. Like, it's 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 a job now. And I, th I think when guys come in, they think it's the same thing, but it's not. So it's kind of a reality check. So, um, you know, you got to deal with real fans now. These aren't just dudes that go to school with you. These are dudes with, like, families and stuff. So, like, if you lose a the game, they're, they're coming after you on social media and stuff. So it's, it's you know, the anxiety is a little higher. Um, but anyways, I, I think my transition was as smooth as it could be. I think uh, my first year we, we were 2-14. and 14. We, we weren't that good. Um, but I made the most out of it. I had a, a decent amount of catches, and uh, you know I thought I did well. So I think um, that first year was rough. Oh, and the, that that's also the year that Andrew died. Um, so I, that that took a bit of a toll on me uh, that year. I, I think you guys remember Andrew. Yeah. So that also happened that year, and I think around December, and that it, it was just a rough year. And um, I, I felt like my second year to my third year, everything kind of picked up. And, um, you know, I, I started to focus in on football a little bit more and stopped being so distracted by just the, the things outside of football that, you know, you can really control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you, you honed in on that focus. Uh, yeah. So it seems like, you, you know, even though that was a, a characteristic that you had initially, you you your your story speaks of you tweaking these these characteristics that you have at each level. Yep. You know what I mean? So then talk about the focus that was needed transitioning from St. Louis and coming back home. Yeah. I'm sure those were different distractions where you have, you know, you're right up the street from family, not necessarily right up the street, yeah, but close enough. More of a direct access. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have more access to you. Speak on the, maybe the change in terrain that, that, that occurred coming from St. Louis and coming back home to uh, to Green Bay, Wisconsin with the Packers. And uh, did you feel a, a, a different level of responsibility? Um, did you feel uh, like a new beginning? Just yeah. speak a bit more on it, that. It felt sort of, I would say it felt sort of like a little, a little bit of both. It felt like a new beginning in the sense that um, – uh, with the Rams at the time, we were we were kind of going, jumping from one quarterback to another. So there was no like consistent quarterback play. And uh, mm -hmm. going to Green Bay is like okay, Aaron, Aaron's there. Aaron's the starter. That that's who it is. We don't have to worry about the offense changing up or anything. You know, we can just play ball. And um, I think before the year before I got there is when they lost in the NFC Championship to Atlanta. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm going to Green Bay feeling good. I'm like, okay, this, this is going to be a really good team. Uh, it, it's a group, good group of guys. The, last year they went to the NFC uh, championship. You know, it, it's going to be a great season. We get into the year. 
I, I want to say that's the year that Aaron broke his collarbone, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the year Aaron broke his collarbone. So, and that was like three games in. And, you know, it, it was, we hit a rough patch because I think Martellus Bennett at the time got injured too. So we didn't have our starting quarterback and we didn't have our other tight end. So um, a lot got put on my plate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. A lot, a lot got put on my plate at that time. And it was, it was difficult, um, you know, but I. What does it take? What does it take for you, bro? When you, cause you're talking about, you kind of diving into one of the chapters in the Think Like a DJ book. It's, uh, we're talking about like continuing to uh, spin hit. It's uh, chapter five uh-huh. in the book, Keep Spinning Hits. When you kind of already made a decision in your mind where you you picked your tempo, you dropped your first mm-hmm. record, you just kind of, you know, feeling the beat. Like you were down, like you said, you got kind of felt your beat kind of down in St. Louis, kind of getting your yep. feet up under you. You get back up here and, you know, things start to shift and change and you kind of spinning hits and you got it going, but you got to constantly trust yourself. You got to kind of ride the wave radically trust who you are and then continue to spend hits in the space of, of lack and still have abundance. How, what is that really, where did you reach? What did you have? What place did you have to go to, to, to find that, that, that wherewithal to continue to keep spending hits when yeah. you're in the mix and things are shifting, changing and you troubleshooting why you actually on the field. Right. Um, man, it's, I, I think when a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, just pressure and a lot of things get put on your plate as a player, it's hard to get into a flow, into like a, a game rhythm, a game flow, kind of like what you're talking about, getting into that rhythm and just riding that wave. And it, it was it was really, really tough getting into that. But there was a, a couple games um, that I was able to. But um, I, I think while those two years I spent in Green Bay, um, you know, that that's kind of when um, it, McCarthy was, you know, it, things weren't going as well. Um, so I, I feel like I kind of walked into a situation that was, you know, things were going south and I didn't really have any control over it. So I was just kind of out there. So I was just trying to make the most out of my opportunity uh, at the time. Um, so it, it was hard to get into a rhythm. It was really, really hard to get into a, into that groove. And in 2018 came and that's when um, we, we ended up signing Mercedes and uh, Jimmy Graham. And, uh, dude, that was probably one of the best years of, of just a group, a good group of guys in the locker room. Um, just fun guys. I, I love Jimmy. Jimmy's great. He was a great guy in the locker room. Mercedes was a great guy in the locker room. We joked around. We had fun. Um, we didn't make it to the playoffs that year. Uh, we had a bunch of injuries that year, too. But uh, that was that was a really, really good year of football. I, I felt like I built some, uh, some really good friendships with, with good guys. And um, you know, I, I think I cherish that the most out of out of a lot of um, the. I would I would say I didn't have that much success in in the league. Like I didn't go to the playoffs. Um, so I, so the things I cherish. But you stick with it, bro. It seems exactly. like you you got to stick to itness. You stick with it through adversity, and that's that's where we are right now in society. It's a lot of young folks of color, young black people, young people that are kind of just having to uh, stick with mm-hmm. the mix you know continue to keep on blending songs together and make a tapestry from different songs it may be 30 seconds of this record maybe 15 seconds of this record that's something that i've always admired about you is your your ability to uh lock in when it get tough i remember i remember when you uh did you uh hurt your did you break your leg or your arm or something you were still on the uh you was out on the uh on the moped cutting you had came to cut my hair i thought i was coming to you i think i broke I, I think I broke, crib, yeah, you broke, I broke you a broke bone in my leg or something. And uh yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> that's crazy. Dude, yeah, man. I was dedicated. I was trying to, I was, bro, I was, I mean, we were all hustlers, but that was my hustle. What do you what do you think what do you think you get that from? Does that come from your dad? Uh, I, Is that coming from your mom? Is that something that's because I think that's one thing that all of us that admire you, we we know that about you, that you you have this ability to um like tap into another dimension of uh yeah. commitment. Where do, where do you get that from? When it get worse, I, I, you yeah, seem I like you get up. better. Um, I, I think I – honestly, my mom, dude, I think um, there was a time when I was younger when my dad got really sick and he couldn't work. <clears throat> and he couldn't get benefits, benefits either. So – because he was in, like, a gray area of, like, the insurance. So my mom had to work overtime. And I think I saw her step up to the plate and just take over and – 
kind of take over the household and make sure all the bills are paid, make sure we were good. And I, I saw that and I feel like I kind of took that and ran with it. You know, I, I feel like if, if she can do that, then I, I, oh, I can definitely go out and, and um, make this team or uh, get this spot or, you know, get drafted high or whatever, whatever it is, man. I, I think, you know, you, I step up to the plate and I, I remember moments where my mom had to step up to the plate. And I, I think I just did that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for it. Well, yeah. How do you how do you uh, what do you what do you say to young people right now who feel hopeless? So like it's too yeah. much. It's too much for me to try to push ahead. You know, they look at, um, you know, they all in yeah. God business and other people business, what other people got going on. And then what, you know, what gifts and talents they may not have that God gave yeah. another person that they don't they weren't naturally born with. What do you say to a young man or a young woman that wants to reach a high school success and impact in the yep. culture? You know what? Is, what do they need to do? What What do they need to key into? What do they need? What do they need to tap into in order to transcend and get to another another level of uh, impact and really um, just fulfillment in their own lives? What do they need to? I think key they into? need to um, stay stay in their lane, whatever their lane is. I think they need to stay in it and not do what's popular or do what's a trend. I think originality comes from staying in your lane and doing what you think is right for for you like you know back in high school it wasn't really cool to like be an artist per se like to draw and go to art class but i like doing it and i was good at it ken liked doing it he was good at it and we kind of just made it cool per, I, I guess like we 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 just did it just been speaking on like the multiple the one, one we I, I've seen the parallel between the team the initial team that you started on with you mom dad your brothers yeah you know transitioning to you know your team um, uh, or or um, yeah your team at Rufus King then you know transitioning to college to the St. Louis Rams to the Packers uh, so you've been on multiple teams. Yep. Speak to me more about, you know, how you feel a team aspect or being co directly connected to like minded individuals or just that role that team has played in your life for me, Lance. Uh, I think being on a team, uh, the, the number one thing that stands out to me is accountability. I feel like being on a team forces you to be accountable. So if uh, I mean. We don't really need examples, but accountability is the most important thing. You know, if we drop a ball or um, if we fall start, any of those things that hinder the team, uh, you know, it, it hurts everybody. And I think that's one thing that I did love about football that, you know, you can take with you through life is it's the ultimate team sport. You got to be held accountable for everything you do wrong or right. Like if you do anything right, you know, you're the guy that helped build that team up to win. So. Uh, just holding yourself accountable, showing up, being there, being having good energy. Um, I think that gets looked over a lot, just being positive. And, um, man, being, being a good team player, man, like it, the, the stronger you are as an individual, the stronger the team is. And I think, I think young people, Lance, I think young people often buy into this uh, ideology of um, like Americanism. Like I did it on my own, like this self-made thing, right? <laughs> Yep. Like I'm a self-made billionaire. Like I did it all by myself. Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, my grand pop and my Insta popping people on my Facebook, my snap popping people following my TikTok. So it's like, it's about me. It's just individualism. In yeah. the book, Think Like a DJ, we talk about the a concept of a dream circle of getting into a heyloic state, you know, that state where you feel like, like us right now, we ain't seen each other. We haven't talked in years, but it feel like family. You know what I mean? Exactly. So when, when you tap into that accountability for, for a young person, you were kind of going there telling young people to stay in their lane and focus on uh, accountability. How can a young person, uh, you know, how can accountability impact a young person's life? What did, what did accountability do for you? And, you know, what, what can you say accountability can potentially do for a young person if they look at themselves? take an honest inventory of the character that they have within and then find things that, that are not there and then try to weave it into who they are. Cause you, you were destined for the NFL back in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to, you know, pull more things towards you and create a, a, a more halo state and pull more people in your network, fearlessly network, pull guys into your dream circle and, to, you know, from your team and be accountable. How, what is that accountability? What does that really mean to you? 
And how does that translate to young people who need to stay in their own lane? Man, it means a lot. I think uh, accountability is super important. I think um, one of the things you said is you you got to, in order to get to the next level, you, you can't do it on your own. You, you, you do need a, t- a team, essentially. You need a team of people. And um, I think the most important thing of having the team is having, instead of just having people, just have, having in, influential people or really good people or people that are going to encourage you to, to, to stay in your lane and to do the things that you want to do, not do what the trend says do. So I think um, just having somebody that's like-minded, I'm, I'm circling back around to what Ken said now, uh, having, having people that's like-minded in your circle, that I think that's, and and then you know the next guy is going to be accountable because you could trust him. I, I think if you have those like-minded people around you, you got guys around you could trust. Now you can play ball. Now you can now you can step back and throw the deep ball, knowing that that guy's going to be there. Or um, if if you know if it's if it's about life, uh, if your friend's supposed to pick you up at five, he's there at five and not five thirty or whatever it is. Like, I, it seems I, to me. Not to cut you off, that accountability mm. is sort of the younger brother of trust. Yep, that's exactly what it is. That um, in order for me to 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 sort of hold you accountable for the things that that I need from you as a teammate, um, I have to trust that you have you already have those things within, mm-hmm. and that when it comes time to produce or showcase those talents or capabilities, that you're going to do them. Um, speak on that trust factor then, Lance. Speak on the fact that, you know, you're a tight end, that that the running back has to trust you to block for him in those instances. Yeah. Or, you know, Aaron Rodgers has to trust that you're going to get, you know, uh, those yards after the catch. Or just down to the foundation of things, that mom is going to trust you to complete those assignments at school, to be the example of Kendrick's that she's instilled in you. Talk to me a bit more about the trust, Lance. I think I think it's important that um, I think your character helps you build that trust. I think if you, you know, I think if we're good character people and we don't cut corners and, you know, we, whatever, if we throw away our trash can instead of throwing it out the window, a lot of people do that and I hate that. I think just that character of doing the right thing when people aren't watching. If if you can find people like that and bring them together, I think that's a that's a winning team. And um, it's important that young people understand that um, you know life isn't like these things you want to do as a kid. They're not really going anywhere. They're going to be around. You, you can still go hang out with the homies or go to the movies or do whatever you want, but it's important that you 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 do what's going to get you to a, a good future first. You know, go to class, go to, but don't just go to class, like get good grades, you know, be nice to the teacher, just stuff, stuff that doesn't really take a lot of extra effort, but just, just doing it and making sure that when people look at you, they don't think, negative to negatively they they think good good things and so a, self, a self check maybe. yeah a self check gonna start with me first start with me it's first like i have to be accountable and take responsibility for the things within my grasp yep. within the things that i can change that's what you're saying to us lance that's that's what i'm saying man it, it, it starts it starts within it starts with you and then you find people like you and then and and now you got a team of of people that you can trust and you know it's i don't think it's not that it's it's nothing more than that one of my most favorite parts of our conversation with lance was when he talked about trusting your vision when he when he said don't expect people to believe in your vision because they can't see your vision he knew as a young boy that he was going to the nfl he he knew he had to put the work in but he knew that he was going he had the vision for it although other people may have told him time and time again that he was not going to reach that level of success as someone who actually played football in high school against Lance Kendricks, I knew back then he was going to the NFL. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back in the mix.
I think about trust. I think about uh, self trust and uh, radically trusting yourself because you have to have you have to have a vision for yourself and believe in it. Because some people are gonna be like, that shit ain't gonna work, bro. Some people are gonna be like, Absolutely. no, that's not for you or that that you know how many you know how many young um, uh, aspiring athletes here that you know the statistics uh, the stats about one in x amount of people making. Yeah, you didn't. I, you know, from your side of the table, can you talk about um, when you knew, did you always knew you were going to be in the NFL? Did you always knew you would be a professional athlete? And what did that trust, what did that, what did that really, really feel like that radical trust in yourself? Yeah. Was it, did you run up against people saying, you know, no, nah, this ain't going to work? Because when we practice, I played for Juno High School, mm -hmm. so we practiced for your ass for about a month. <laughs> and we got our ass blew out. I was a quarterback. <laughs> And they put me on Lance Kendrick. I end up on the bench because you got a touchdown. I, they said, sit your ass on the sideline, bro. You ain't ready. You ain't made for this. So I knew your ass. I knew you oh, was on your way. I remember that. had to practice for you for a month. Right. But uh, from your side of the table, did you already radically and always trust yourself? When did you know that you were going to be an NFL professional athlete? Uh, honestly, I, I, I felt like I knew as a kid. I felt like I knew when I was like 10 or 11. And – the only reason I felt that way is because I knew that at such a young age, I knew that if I wanted to get that far, I had to put in the work. And it's literally as simple as that. It's like, if you can, if you want to do something, if you want to be this, cool. You can be, if you want to be the doctor, cool. You can be a doctor, but you got to put in the work. And I remember being uh, with the Patriots and Bill Belichick, we were in a meeting and, um, uh, he had Randy Moss come speak to the team that day. What? And dude, that was come on, I know bro, you were salivating. Bro, oh my god. That was that was probably one of the best speeches I've ever heard. Man, but one thing on. Bill said before oh, cash, homie. Oh, straight cash, homie. <laughs> straight cash, homie. Well, <laughs> but Bill, I remember he said something that day. Um, he was like, You can't cheat the ground. He was like, We won a Super Bowl last year, so what? We have to start all over again. And Thank it's you, such bro. a championship mentality, man. Like, he's right. Like, you, if you want to get that far, you, you got to do the work. You got to put the work in. Like, you can't cheat it. And you got to realize that I can still do the things that I want to do. I just have to do – I have to have my priorities in order. And I have to do the things that are important first. And once I knock these important things out, you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to play video games for the next three hours, you can. But it's like – you got to put the work in first and then go do whatever you want. But so, I, I mean, I hear that you can, I'm just getting a, a feel that you committed early to hard work and to the vision that you had in your mind that no, no matter what, that you were going to get to that point, to that achievable point of becoming an NFL athlete. Um, just speak on that, that commitment early. Yeah. Just, um, I know the deep, the, um, no First doubt. step of things like the DJ is uh, picking the tempo mm -hmm. and understanding that vision, understanding your dream. I know you already sort of gave us a bit in regards to that, but um, the thing that really resonates and that I really want you to speak on a bit more is just the commitment because you have your, your terrain didn't necessarily change. The elevation or the expectation did. Yeah. And so then how can we, talk about or how can we uh how yeah. can we further express to us about that commitment that it took I, you know what I mean to your initial vision. I think you gotta make I think you gotta make it a lifestyle. You have to live that way. You have to kind of like Kobe, like when he was a kid, he lived and breathed basketball. And obviously he's one of the best. And I think you gotta do the same thing with anything, anything you want to do. And I think with football and with track, like I just made it a lifestyle. I, I I knew I had to go to track practice. I knew I had to go to football practice. And I didn't skip. Like a lot of guys would just not show up. And it's like, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you show up? Like at the end of the day, you gotta run on Saturday. And if you lose, you gotta remember that you didn't show up. It's like don't bite yourself in the ass before you even get to the finish line. Like do put the work in and then take the test. And if you ace the test, you're gonna be like, Hell yeah, I, I put the work in. But if you don't ace the test, it's like, damn, I got to work harder. And then you work harder and then you eventually you ace it. So I think it's literally just putting the work in. It's not cheating the grind. And it's it's weird to 
have that mentality at such a young age. But I think if you're if you're a competitive kid and you like doing that type of stuff, you know, being on the field or being on the court, um, you know, if you if it's like if you really care about it that much and if you really, really want to go to the next level, you, you can get there. You just no and those it, those people those people who are com- or uh, competitors, they understand what you're talking about yep. right now. I, I cried about losing our contest to my brother when we had strong competition. So, like, you know what I mean? Just right. the, the competitor in you, will it'll, it, it'll spark some type of flame, fire within yep. you. Um, I, I'm i hung on this you can't cheat the grind mentality as well as the parallel between the commitment that it takes or that the, the um, in order to reach those Bill Belichick rings, those Tom Brady situations where you are, you know, in the upper echelons, the grind, the, the grind that you spoke of, mm-hmm. like, and then that parallel that you talked about with Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Athletes keep in touch with athletes. Athletes pay attention to different athletes, no matter if you're football player, basketball player. Speak to me, uh, Lance, a bit more about the responsibility of an athlete. Yeah. Do you feel the responsibility as a sort of influencer, as a leader, as someone who's in the uh, public eye to, you know, keep your face clean, keep your boogers out your eyes, <laughs> and not only that, but right. to to be able to speak, you know what I mean, uh, intellectually about the Black Lives Matter movement, to take a stand about, you know, things that are occurring within, you know, uh, our communities right now and we just just speak a bit more on that i think we um it's it's such a because I, I feel like you can take it both ways i feel like on one side you know at the end of the day this is our profession and we shouldn't necessarily have to speak on social uh injustices um if we don't want to but at the same time it's like you have a platform and you might as well so I think a lot of guys, and I remember I sat for an anthem in Green Bay, and um, just because I didn't like what Trump was saying at the time, um, I think he was telling us sons of bitches to stand up for the anthem or something. And uh, he was treating Puerto Rico like like it was not affiliated with the states at the time. He was doing a bunch of stuff that was crazy. But I, I think no matter who you're in front of, no matter, no matter what, I remember when I sat for the anthem and just looking around and just seeing how many people were just so like, like, what are they doing? But it's like, you know, it's, you got to open your eyes. Like somebody has to do it to open their, their eyes. It's like, it has to be done. What, what sort of mindset did you have before that coming into it? Was that a thing? Okay. You know, I heard Trump on Saturday. <laughs> kind you know of. You know what I mean? I uh, already made my mind up Saturday night, and I'm going into Sunday with this. Was this just off the cuff? No. Was this a sort of collaborative, you know what so, I mean, uh, idea between you and a few players or so what? Kevin King, uh, he's the corner for the Packers. He he wanted to uh, he wanted to do it. He's, he's kind of, He was kind of feeling that way all week, like all, that week leading up to that game. I forget what game it was. And uh, Marty uh, Martellus, he was like, if you do it, I'm going to do it. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm going to think about it. So for me, it was. It wasn't just you three? Yeah, it was just us three. But it was. For sure. It's a picture, it's too. It's a picture. Huh? Yep. For sure. I've seen that picture. For yeah. Sure. And it's. Um, for me, I, I was standing up and I kind of wanted to sit down. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, man. Like, I feel y'all. Like, I feel your pain. Like, I really do. And I, I know a lot of people didn't want to do it because, one, we're in Green Bay. And, it, you know, that's – nobody in that mm-hmm. stadium is really going to be on our side with that, if we're being honest. So, it it, it just – it took a lot of courage and it took a lot of understanding. Um, and the president – th- I thought the president of the Packers, uh, Murphy, uh, I thought he did a great job of coming to us and saying, you know, what can we do as an organization? And he decided to uh, give 250K to underprivileged organizations in the state of Wisconsin. And I was able to, and you you split it up in five ways. So each organization got 50K. 
And um, okay. I was able to get the Sherman Phoenix um, on that ballot of uh, organizations. So um, I was able to get the Packers to donate the money, which, you know, I'm really proud of. I, I thought that. I, I, Bro, that's unfair. just we didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't know oh, that yeah. part though. We didn't know that the Sherman Phoenix was uh keyed into. Kansas. Yeah, dude, I I did a um I, I got a picture somewhere. I gotta find it, but I'm basically holding a check, a big check. Um, it's it's at the Packers um stadium. I'm holding a big check with the the Sherman Phoenix uh, owners, and uh, yeah, we 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 were able to get them 50k, and then I donated 5k, and the league matched my donation of 5k. So. Um, they got they 60, got 60 and like I don't like <laughs> want to obviously brag, but it's like that was that was I was able to to bridge the gap, as Ken says, from the Packers yep. to the city of Milwaukee. Not just you know like there, I, I feel like there was no real connection with the city, and so right. I was able to to do that. And then the next year when I was gone, the linebacker uh, Burke. He, he reached out to me. He was like, who's that organization you're working with out of Milwaukee? And I was like, Sherman Phoenix. He was like, oh, okay, I want to work with them. And he did. He ended up working with them. So I kind of was See, able to pass the torch, man. Take. And it, it felt good to, like, be able to help um, that organization in particular, especially, you know, that we, we grew up in that area. So, Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what Dr. King talked about. He speaks upon uh, been in the arc of justice. You know, been in it, and we I think of it as an economic arc, been in that economic, the arc of justice toward economic financial, you mm-hmm. know, freedom, giving us the opportunity to not just impact each other uh, civilly and socially, but ep- economically. Those not, those dollars mean yeah, a lot absolutely. for a, a business owner over there, and it means a lot for somebody that's trying to have uh, more impact in that in that in that community. When we was growing up, it was uh, the the local boys and girls club, or for me, it was like the YMCA or it was like the Jubilee mm-hmm. Day Camp or something like that going on around us. So you are that you are that person uh, that, you know, you the person that you've been waiting on. You are the person that young people need to, to uh, key into, you know, when you gift them, you know, and bring, bring, bring your resources over to the Sherman Phoenix. That's their neighborhood environment. That's the place that they go to for uh, safe haven and food and things of the sort. I got a couple clients over there as a financial advisor that I work with in that space. And I know from being over there on a, on a, you know, at different events and that those dollars meant a lot to those young people. And for you to, you know, to be the person that made that happen and to have, you know, somebody else key into your, your dream circle and, you know, vibe with you and add more dollars to the pot. All we can say is thank you. Cause we, we remember when you, you know, you and the bros, when y'all, you know, y'all stood there and y'all made a statement as a team, as a, you know, mm-hmm. as a triage. So that just, that just gives other young men, other young women, the ability to know that when they get there, they don't have to tuck their tail and you know yeah, in between their legs. They can be who they are and stand I up. I think it's important foot. that we are that that we um, be who we are. I, I, that's that's why I, um, I I really like that the NBA allows the players to use their platform to really speak up and and kind of make decisions for themselves as as individuals and as teams and as an organization. I, I think that they do well with being able to letting the players just kind of spread the word and do it peacefully, you know? Yeah, bro. No, we thank, we thank you for uh, stepping into that because like you said, you could choose to do, you know, you choose your destiny at an accomplished level in a professional sport. You choose your destiny and you, you chose to stand up for a cause that you believed in and you partnered with others around you. So um, I wanted to ask you really quick of the, of the seven steps that are, you know, in the think like a DJ book of the seven steps that we talk about, that, you know, you actually need to tap into the key yourself into a higher frequency and go from poverty to prosperity, a mindset of lack into a mindset of abundance of those seven steps. Was, was, were there any one or was there any particular one or two that stuck with you when we talking about yep. picking a tempo, dropping your first record, filling the beat, which, which yep. of the ones stuck with you the most and why did they resonate with you and how does it actually, how is it applicable in, in your particular industry as a professional I say athlete? Like the wave because, um, as an athlete, and you can this goes with life too. I think when you when you step on the field or you step in the classroom, you step wherever you step. I think it's important to get into that flow and to feed off the, your your teammates and to communicate and to just take it all in. I think that's important. And 
and not to feel so uh I don't know I, I feel like as as black men sometimes we 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 tend to feel like too cool to like to communicate or something or too cool to or isolated yeah, in our thoughts. Yeah, we or, just you know, individualism is like I you know, I you know, I'm a self-made yeah, yeah. billionaire. And it, it's it's like it's okay to to tap into somebody else's energy and feed off of them and 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 do it with everybody and to and to build each other up. I feel like when we were growing up back home, a lot of times it's like people were climbing out of a, a hole and others were pulling them down just to climb over them as opposed to helping each other just climb out the hole. And I feel like it could be so much easier if we just help each other, but we, a lot of times we choose not to. And um, I don't know, I think it's important to ride the wave, man, to to feed off of each other's energy and to stay in that flow. And while you're in that flow state, to that, I think that's where you gain the most knowledge and you start to learn and you start to appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I feel like looking back playing nine years of football, I feel like the thing I appreciate the most is really is like being in the huddle. And it's 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 being around the guys who were like minded and the guys who uh, wanted to win and were on the same team. And um, yeah, man, it was it, right the way. <laughs> right the way. <laughs> Straight up, no, I appreciate that, bro. What's uh, what's what's the one thing that you can say that, um, young black folks can do? I mean, we still all young. We all in our thirties. What's the one thing that you can say that young black people can do to help push the culture forward? If it was one thing that you would recommend that young people do as they continue to change culture, uh, what's that thing that you believe will actually help them transcend man, into a uh, into a higher dimension? I, I think, um, self. I mean, I know we we talked about self made is. You know, you don't you don't have to be self-made, but um, just like ownership, I think. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm gonna take that you. <laughs> ownership, and uh, I mean, if you want to take it another step further, real estate. Um, I think owning property is the best way to solidify your like this, your stamp in in this country. You, you own you own a piece of it, and I think a lot of people growing up in inner cities, they didn't really, you know, we don't, we don't learn about this stuff. I wish I learned about this stuff in, in high school and I, and we did not And man, like Ken, I, I appreciate what you're doing because I feel like that's perfect. Like you can, you can bridge that gap and you can teach a lot of these young kids that, but I think ownership is where it's at, man. Buy it, buy it. Yeah. While we're there, like- just tell us a bit more about what you, your your after uh, your um, yeah business endeavors yeah, yeah. after. Um, so know. I I'm, I'm dabbling into real estate. I own a few properties, um, a couple rentals, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's it's good. It's it's just getting my foot in the door. But I think are you oh, are you buying sorry. where you're located, or are you uh, buying back home? Or? No. So yes, yes. So I have a I have a home in L.A. where I live. Uh, I have a home uh, in, in the mountains up north in uh, Big Bear, uh, California. It's like okay. the, the ski mountain area. And um, okay, I what sparked the uh, the sort of hunt or sort of the the just um, competitive nature in you to go into the real estate? I just kind of always gravitated towards that. I, I, I majored in econ in, in college for a little bit, and just knowing how knowing how money works and what you need to or where you need to put your money to make sure that in a volatile market it's not you're not going to lose it i think real estate is the safest place to put it if you need to put it somewhere so um and then you can make pro- profit off your investment so um right now i'm starting uh more smaller you know with residential but eventually i want to move into commercial um, and, and, and go bigger. And so did you partner with someone or are you working with an uh, investment firm or are you getting skinny from, yeah. like, you know, give us a bit more uh, of the sort so of process. I'm, we'll get it. Yeah. And, so I'm, and all um, that. I'm, I'm kind of in the prelims of everything, but I am working with, um, um, a, a group of guys who are 
who are in the, the development side of real estate, um, specifically okay. university um, housing. So, you know, which is which is a great market because students need to live somewhere. So um, that and and like self storage, that's always good too. People need to put their stuff somewhere. So it's like, um, so that's that's what I'm getting into. Uh, but it, like I said, I just started really um, this year, just kind of researching and doing more and learning more about how many doors you got. You say how many what? How many doors you got so oh, far? How uh, many just what I have three, just three, three. Yes, yeah, okay. so I'm not deep. Okay. Three, three within the year? year, actually. So I, I sold one last okay. year, okay. bought another one, and then so sold one. Wait, did I do that all this year? So I sold one, bought another one last year, sold one, bought another one this year. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's moving pretty. Yeah, in, I'm uh, looking at add, yeah, I'm looking at add one next year. So I wanted my goal is like one a year or something. Yeah, just so I want to okay. take it slow, okay. but and eventually build it up to where. Um, you know, it's their apartment complexes or whatever. They're bigger. So. No, for sure. It seems like you're doing some things that are going to uh, uh, ensure that your uh, legacy as well as uh, your generational wealth say within your family and that you guys have some things to sort of uh, rest your hats on, Absolutely. so to speak. Um, what do you think that we can do as far as black people within the next 400 years that can sort of position us or uh position us yeah. like you build have up, done for your fans build up the black communities i think buying black people buying in their own community and building it up and i mean like we said well like we said earlier it starts from within so it starts from within the community i think you you start with a place like sherman phoenix um or ken you're about to start your foundation uh you start with something like that and you 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 get the like-minded people and you build around it and eventually, um, you know, you, you created something that's that's bigger than all of us. And I think the most important thing that always gets left out is eating healthier. Like we don't eat healthy enough. Like that's that's probably that probably should be like number one. Like we got to stay alive long enough to even do anything. So um, just eating healthier and like being mindful of not putting a bunch of trash in your body all the time. Like I get it. Like they're, you know, the weekend you want to get in or whatever, but yeah, man, just taking care of your body. So we got a game that we do just a rapid response game at the end. Uh, and it just taps into, uh, sort of the, the themes and, uh, sort of, um, characteristics that we feel to think like a DJ podcast or established on. Uh, so I'm going to shoot a few, uh, to you. Lance, you just let us know what sort of things you think of or associations that you get from yep. these words, okay? Um, first one is black excellence. Man, just the, the highest quality of a human being um, you can be. I think just being a high quality person, high character person. All right, next one is uh, leadership. Um, earning, I, I, I think earning trust, being able to earn others' trust and um being able to steer people in the right direction. All right. And lastly, purpose. Uh, I think purpose goes back to standing in your lane. I feel like we all have a starting line. I feel like there's a, there's an end line way, way deep that we can't see. And, you know, I think um, at the end of the day, if we stay in the lane that we want to stay in, um, I think that end goal, we'll, whatever our purpose is, we'll, we'll end up reaching it. We still in the mix. What about, uh, what about fulfillment in the mix? What does that sound like Just to you when you think of fulfillment? happiness? And um, and secure security, security and, happiness. and happiness. Dive into uh, destiny. Um, what does that sound like? Destiny. Did you absolutely. always destined, predestined? Destiny. It, it, what does that to sound me? Like? Uh, I think that kind of goes with purpose and fulfillment. Almost. Um, I think we all have a, a a end goal or end game, and um, I think in order to reach it, in order to reach your destiny, you got to stay focused and consistent. The last one we're gonna shoot at you is financial freedom. Mm -hmm. Or That's last a good two. One financial that, freedom that one important. is mm -hmm. important uh responsibility i think we 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 really need to own up to our responsibility and you know if we got debt let's pay off our debt let's not just save our money but like do it smartly you know let's pay off debt and save money and not just put it in the bank account you know invest it properly 
or put it aside to to um, have a down payment for a house, you know, a car. Yeah, and you're speaking to what the next one is. Uh, black wealth. What yep. does that say? Um, just that ownership mean? and and uh, kinship and um, man, just being inseparable. I don't even know if that's a word. I think it is. <laughs> that boy got them words today. <laughs> bro got them words today. How many books you read uh, this week, right bro? Now, actually. I'm reading. Hey, so no, we happy to be here with you, bro. We very proud of you. Uh, we stand behind you, bro. We win at your back, never at your face. We always are persistence versus resistance. So when it comes to you, um, bros, you know, me and Ken, Ken and I, as brothers, as a dream circle together, we support you, bro. We root for you. And um, we thank you for being a part of our, our show and telling your story and sharing with young people what it means to go to the highest heights. Yeah, professional and athletics. I think it's important real quick for them to know that um, it's not a science. It's not magic. It's not nothing that's not attainable. Like, it's all attainable. You just got to be willing to put it in the work. You can't cheat the grind. So if you want it, you know, go get it and be a good guy, man. Have, have good character. Be nice to people. Uh, you've spoken on so many great things and so many jewels today, man. I appreciate the wisdom. I appreciate just your story and your experience that you share with us and our listeners, man. Yes, and I want to tell you while you're I here, thank it, you man. so much, man, for for the inspiration that you've given me as a black man to instill those things as far as, you know, black excellence and financial freedom and leadership and purpose into my own children. And so um, I will be continually rooting for you on uh, in, in this game of life after, you know, NFL and whatever business endeavors that you uh, seek to embark on. And so, again, like Martinez said, uh, thank you again for your time. Um, thank you for just uh, sharing those things with us. Right, we'll I, appreciate tapping it. In with I appreciate you, it, guys. Appreciate talking to y'all, boys. Right, bro. Love, bro. Love to you and the family, man. Right, love, bro. Remember, your life is the party. You are the DJ. Boy, what an episode, I gotta say. I love when Lance talked about, you know, if we, you know, you just got good character, if you're a good character person and you don't cut corners and you do the right thing when people not watching, that's what makes a winning team. I love when he discussed the fundamentals of life and that we actually need to do the things that don't take a lot of effort in order to have boomerang success, which is where you throw out positivity and that karmic energy actually finds you. It comes back and it hits you and slaps you in the mouth like somebody punching a punching bag. So I want my success to slap me in the mouth like Lance Kendricks. I want my success to find me, baby. Tune into the next episode of Think Like a DJ, the mixtape podcast. Visit us at www.martinezwhite.com. M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z, W-H-I-T-E. M like money, white like the White House. Or find me on IG at DJ M White or on Twitter at Mr. More Than a DJ. M-R, More Than a DJ. And find my co-host right on Instagram at Head Start M-K-E. Think like a DJ.